Afternoon, everybody, and welcome to In the Kitchen. And I'm doing good, have another sip of wine. It's a beautiful afternoon. It's not very cold outside. The temperature is 42 degrees, and that's not too bad. You just put on double layers and you'll be just fine. Today we are making baked macaroni and cheese. I have my milk, I have butter, I have Colby cheese, I have pepper jack cheese, I have extra sharp cheese. I like to use the New York State extra sharp. I have my elbow macaroni, which I cooked already, and I have one egg since we're making a small pan. We do not need two eggs. To start this up, we are going to have a sip of wine. It's Domaine de la Riviere. This is a 2017 Chardonnay and it's Russian River, Sonoma County. I'm sure a lot of you are aware that the fires in California ruined some of the vineyards. Marla and her family has a home there and their vineyard is there as well. They were lucky, I believe the fire was maybe a quarter of a mile from their home and their vineyard and home was saved. Unfortunately, there were so many other people who lost their homes, which is important not to lose your home. The vineyard can grow again, but to start all over and build your home, it takes a long time. Okay, so let's get started. I added a little butter to my cast iron, and you know I like using cast iron because it holds the heat. What will happen, this pan will hold the heat for maybe 25 minutes. So when you want to serve and you have a little mat on your table, you can just bring the whole pan to the table, cut it, and it's still warm. You do not have to worry about warming it up. Okay, so let's get started. First thing I'm going to do, I think I'm gonna crack an egg. There we go. One egg. I'm back. And I'm gonna do this. There we go. So I am so happy that so many people are tuning into this show. I was very fortunate to be able to come here to QPTV and have my show. It's Saturdays, every Saturday from 12.30 to 1.30 and every Wednesday evening at 5 p.m right here on QPTV, In the Kitchen with Chef Renee Hewitt. And I'm so glad that you're here. Okay, now, my macaroni, which I said I cooked earlier, and this is how I do mine. Just a little layer, as such. Okay, that part is done. Then I add my cheese. And this is the Colby. I'll put three pieces as such. Then I'll add my pepper jack. This is gonna give it that little, little tang. Don't you like that when you bite into something and it just lifts it up and it's not bland? This is what we want. Okay, next I'm going to add some of my extra sharp. Some pieces, oops, this piece said, no, not me. Okay, here we go. Wow, this is coming along great. Okay, now that I have this, I am going to add just a little of my egg. We 
because as you know, this is going to help bind it. Let me just move this along so we get to every nook and cranny. So it says nook and cranny. There we go. That is looking really good. Okay, now here is my milk. Some people use regular 2%. Some people use the carnation milk. That's left up to you. So I'm just gonna add a little. And some people add um, different type of sauces to bechamel. It's left up to you. Whatever you prefer, that's what you use, okay? Another sip of wine, hmm. Okay, so we're good here. Another part of the show, starting, I would say, in the next week or so, I will be having different guests come on and I will interview them. I graduated from Hudson County Community College of Culinary Arts, and I have a couple of the chefs that are coming on the show. Chef O'Malley, for those of you who watch it, know Chef O'Malley, Chef Kazam, you know him, Chef Claude, and also Miss Webb. Yay, Miss Webb, yay, Miss Webb. These chefs and Miss Webb, I would consider her a chef also. She teaches table service, are really, really good. They are professionals at what they do. So I figured it would be nice to give back to the school and have them come on the show. So you could meet them, I will talk to them, and then we're gonna make a dish. They will come on, on to, separately. They'll have a segment for themselves probably a good 20 minutes, a half an hour, we talk and then we will create the dish. In addition to that, my show will consist of me going to some of the churches. Now you know these women, after the service, they're downstairs preparing these fabulous layout of food. I mean, some of these women, I should say all of them, know how to cook. So they have the service upstairs, then after the service, they go downstairs and they eat and they talk and et cetera, et cetera. My intention is to go to some of these places and interview them and talk about the dishes. In addition, there will be another segment, whereas I'll have someone come on, a guest come on, and they'll talk about their past, their grandmother or great grandmother, a grandfather, a great grandfather, who made these fabulous dishes, who have these fabulous recipes. And I thought it would be a nice idea to bring them to the forefront and let people listen to their stories and understand where these different recipes come from. I think that's very important. You don't see this on television, on some of the uh, Food Network channels or some of the cooking shows. It's basically cooking. I want to give back, and I think it's a good idea to let these people who know how to cook, probably better than me, to come on the show and talk about how the recipe was brought up from, from generation to generation to generation, and, and any tweaks was made to it. You know, sometimes old recipes, they changed a little. In addition to that, I will talk about some of the fab, fabulous um, chefs from way back, maybe from the South, like Edna Lewis, if you know who she is. There are plenty of chefs out there who fix good food and I want to feature them. So as you can see, the show is not all about me, it's about you and it's about all the others who have something to say and made contributions over the years to the culinary industry. What do you think? I think it's a good idea, so stay tuned for that. All right. Moving right along, enough for the talking. I know you dying to see what's going on here. So I have some macaroni in the pan. I added the Kobe cheese, pepper jack, and the extra sharp, okay? I just layered them in there. My next step, I'm going to add a little bit more of the macaroni. There we go. I'm sort of layering it. Okay. Now, a little bit more cheese. A little bit, you mean a lot of cheese. Here we go. One, two. Now you can cut the cheese up at the sizes that you prefer or how much you want in your um, macaroni, baked macaroni and cheese because there is a difference. We're gonna do the Kobe. 
Applejack. Uh, let me put this here. I think I need another knife. I'm back. Okay. Let's um, let's do some pepper jack. And yes, I've washed my hands before I started the show. Cut it like this. Then one, just like so. Okay, let's add this. Add some pepper jack. That's right. Okay, what about some Kobe cheese? Let's do that. I'm gonna cut this in half. And then the chunks are not so big like the others. Those were really big. There we go. This is going to be good. Look at the cheeses. Mmm. Really good. Okay. Now that I've added this, I like adding just a little butter. Just another little piece. And this will spread out as it bakes. Okay, that part is done. What'd you say? I need a sip of wine? Okay. Here's to you. Mmm. So delicious. Okay, we have this oven. I set my oven at 365 degrees. Now all you want is just for the cheese to melt because the macaroni is done. You already boiled that, brought it to room temperature. Okay, so we have this. Let's add a little bit more egg. This is gonna help bind it together. There we go. Ah, oh, this is gonna be great. Now, I'm gonna add a little bit more milk. Oh yeah. Now, a friend of mine, I think I mentioned in one of the other shows, um, I believe her name is Bridget, the one who told me about this, is that you know how much milk you have in your macaroni and cheese, by if you see it starting to rise, you know that's a good amount of milk. You don't want the milk to come over to the top. Okay, this is looking good. I think um, I can add a little bit more of macaroni. That would be great. And a little bit more cheese. Oh yeah, look at this. Yes. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. -mm -mm -mm. We gonna throw down on this. <laughs> All right, all right, this is looking good. And some more cheese. Let me move this. Let's get this out the way. Let's cut up a little bit more. Some more Kobe. There we go. Pepper Jack. This is gonna pick it up a little bit. You know what I mean. Just go pick it up. And say, oh my goodness, this is so great. Renee did it again. <laughs> I hope. Okay. Let's cut some more of this extra sharp. Like I said, I use New York State extra sharp. I seem to like it. There's Cracker Barrel cheese. They're all different types of cheeses that you can use. Everybody has their own preference. And as I said, mine is um, New York State Extra Sharp. One of the other uh, shows, I used a Extra Sharp, but it was white. And it was interesting because when the mac and cheese was done, it, it had the yellow and then it had the white, which is gonna happen here because I'm using the pepper jack. Okay, this looks good. 
Very good. Okay. I want to add just a little bit of butter on the top. Let's do it like this. Okay. I can't wait until um, these shows really, really pick up with um, through uh, Q QPTV. Uh, it's a group of people and they are really, really, really good uh, networking people. They allowed me, come on, well, they allowed me to be able to broadcast through them on Verizon, on Spectrum, and also RCN. Spectrum is also in New York and also in New Jersey. Verizon, you know, is in New Jersey, and I believe they're in New York, and RCN is in New York. All right, so this is what I do. After I get finished, I just mix it up a little. And look at this. This is what we call to die for, right? Mm-hmm. Look at this. Okay. Now, I have to decide on what we're gonna have with this tonight. Hmm, I have not thought of that because it's so early in the day. So, um, I'll think of something good. The other day, I think some of you saw the, um, the ribs that I made as well as the uh, jerk chicken. That jerk chicken, it was so, it was so good. I didn't make it very hot. Some people do not like jerk chicken because it can be very, very hot and they can't deal with that, but I made sure that it wasn't. Well, here we go. Our baked macaroni and cheese. Remember, I'm using the Colby cheese, pepper jack, and New York State extra sharp. I boiled my noodles, my egg noodles, egg noodles my elbow, noodles until they were a little adante because after the milk and the cheese in the oven they're going to become soft. I could have used a little salt but I didn't because these cheeses the combination is a lot of salt as it is. I used a little butter. I used 2% uh, milk. You can use carnation if you like and I made sure that I can see the milk inside the pan. Once again, I'm using the cast iron. I recommend that you try and pick yourself up some cast irons. Uh, get the one that you're gonna need the most if you like frying and baking. I would get the, the round one. That one is a really good pan. Um, you'll be able to see at the end of one of the shows I talk about these uh, beautiful cast iron pans that passed down for years and years and years. And after this, then you will see a little history about the baked macaroni and cheese, its origin, different ways that it has been made. I'll have another sip of wine. This is what it looks like. That's my oven telling me it's heated. That was fast, right? Um, here it is the baked macaroni, the, uh, the cheese ready to be baked. I'm gonna take this and put it in my oven. Woo, that's hot. Woo, that was hot in there. And I think that's it for, for now. Um, once again, thanks for coming. Thanks for watching the show and tune in every Saturday from 12.30 to 1.30 and Wednesday evenings from 5 until 6 o'clock. Until then, here's to you and I'll see you next time on In the Kitchen with Chef Renee Hewitt. Bye. Have you ever baked a chicken, taken it out of the oven, an aluminum pan, 
and 20 minutes later, 10 minutes later, you can lift the pan up with your fingers because it's so cool. That's because you're using aluminum pans. I suggest investing in cast iron. These pans will last a lifetime and have been passed down from generation to generation. This I've used to cook a chicken, a small chicken. I spatchcocked it, meaning the chicken was cut open, pushed down on it, and it fit right in here. This one I've used for baked macaroni and cheese and also cornbread. Wonderful, wonderful pan. This one, great for oven roasters. I have a rack that goes on the inside and the veggies around it cooks fantastically. This is the best. This one is good for cooking burgers on it. You get the lines one way, you turn it around, you get the other way. If you don't want the lines, you just turn it over and there's a flat surface that you can also use for burgers. Remember, it keeps the heat. My stove is a five burner. I put it in the center. You don't need a five burner to use this pan. You can put it on a double and it will do the job. These pans are not expensive. I suggest that you invest in them one at a time and you will never go back to those other thin little pans that you have to turn the flame down and it burns your food. To you, This is a quick kitchen tip from In the Kitchen with Chef Renee Hewitt. Until next time, bye-bye. Today I'm making my version of the chicken sandwich. We have a few things here on the table, so let's get started. First thing you know I have to have is my wine and to you. Today we are drinking Domaine de la Riviere and this is a 2017 Pinot Noir from the Middle Reach Vineyards. Really good. You've heard of me talk of it before. See if you can get your hand on some. Okay, now let's get started. The first thing I have is my chicken tenders, or you can take the chicken breast and slice it very thin, really thin, especially for the kids because you don't want to give them a large piece of chicken. Okay, so here I have my chicken. The first thing I want to do is season, and I'm using R.L. Schreiber, one of my sponsors. This is very good. This is the roasted garlic pepper, and also the sweet and smoky rotisserie. This picks up chicken, trust me. I've mentioned to you before, but see if you can get a hold of this. You'll see um, a link to their site. And at the end, we can do our OG hot sauce. This has onion and garlic, it's a thick sauce. So when you purchase it, make sure that you shake it up because this is not one of those loose, runny um, hot sauces. Okay, I have my chicken breast, um, chicken slices here. I'm gonna season it. The first thing is the rotisserie seasoning. And once again, remember to season from high above, like if it was snowing, I have one side here. Oh my goodness, this is going to be delicious, as my best friend Deborah says, the best. <clears throat> I have I have like five pieces here, and one was on top of the other. So let me just get this like this. Turn them over. Before I turn it over. Let's do a little salt. I normally, I see I forgot because normally I don't really cook with salt, but for you folks, I'm doing it because some of you like salt and it's not a lot. Okay, now that I did that, now it's time to turn them over. And this one goes over. And if you can see, look at the color, you see? And this is the non-seasoned side. Oh yeah. One side I'm gonna give a little extra seasoning. There we go. I have that. Here we go. Nice generous amount. Nice generous amount on this. 
on this. Let's do this one. Yeah. Oh my goodness. This smells good. Trust me. Now I'm going to add a little of the garlic roasted and roasted pepper. You see where I'm going with this? That's my favorite word. So I always say, you see where I'm going with this? Yes, it's going right to me and to you folks when you make it. Let's turn it over. Do the other side. Looking good. There we go. Wow. This is gonna have a nice kick to it because we like spice. Wait until you see what else I have going with this. You're gonna say, oh my goodness, Renee's crazy. Uh-uh. You want to season it really good. Okay. That part is done. Now, next, I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna dip them in some egg and let the extra, uh, you know, drip off. And then my coating is going to be regular cornflakes. Yes, cornflakes. Great idea. Puts a nice crisp when you bite into your sandwich. You get that crunch. Okay. First thing I'm going to do, this is the cornflakes. However, you have to break it up a little. Now, I'm using my hand. You can take it and put it in a plastic bag, cooking bag or whatever, and break it up. You don't want it to be into real fine pieces like the regular breadcrumbs. You want it so when it's cooked, you're gonna see little pieces and you think it was flour. You say, oh my goodness, did you cook that in flour? No, I didn't. I cooked it in cornflakes. And it gives it a nice little flavor. You don't taste, don't taste like cornflakes, but it's really a good idea. I want you to try it. I think you're gonna love it, the results. Now, here we go. Regular, regular cornflakes. Don't get the ones with sugar and all that kind of stuff because it's not the same. Okay. Now, next I need to take the chicken, put it in the egg, pat it in here real hard so the cornflakes will stick to it and then put it in my pan. And of course I have my handy gloves. I remember one show I forgot the gloves, but I took care of that. Thank you folks for reminding me. Yes, you have to have gloves. Okay, look like I'm going to surgery or something with these blue gloves. I wonder if they come in red and green since we have the blue. Okay, now another little sip. Mmm, so good, so good. All right, here is my chicken breast, well seasoned. I'm going to take that and I'm going to dip it in the egg. I'm gonna let the excess drip. We don't want scrambled eggs for our chicken. Just a joke. Remove this over a little. And here it is going to be the best. Now, press it down on it because you want the cornflakes to adhere to the chicken and then turn it over. Now you can make the cornflakes when you crush them as small as you want, but if you want that look, um, don't make them too small. Now here we go. I'm gonna take it and put it in my pan. Remember when you're putting hot things in oil, always put it away from you as such. And there it is. It's already starting. Now, when you fix your chicken, you could, if you notice that the cornflakes are starting to burn or get too dark, take them out and put them on a cookie sheet and let them finish in the oven. Okay? That's one way that you can do it. All right? Now, for my sauce, I don't need the gloves for this. This is going to be my spread. I, let me clean my hands. I am using, making this spicy, chipotle in adobo sauce. This is going to be wonderful, as you can see. Look at that. 
This is what I call spicy. We're gonna have fun with this. And I'm gonna mix that with some mayonnaise. Let me get my bowl. Oops. Put this in here. While that chicken is cooking away, and trust me, it smells really good. Then I'm gonna take my chipotle. Now, this has a big piece. You don't have to have it in there. That's left up to you. We like spicy. I'm not gonna put a lot, but I will put some sauce. Yeah. Oh, that chicken smells good. Then I'm gonna mix this and look at the color. Oh, that is beautiful. Oh yeah. Hold on a second. Yep. Oh, look at that. That's gonna be great. Really good. And our chicken is coming along nicely. Really starting to brown. I can use my fork and make sure that it's not burning. Oh no, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. Okay. Now that I have my sauce going. Oh yeah. Mix it really well. I'm going to put mine on English muffin. Now, yes, you could use the burger roll. That's left up to you. But um, I like the English muffin and it looks good. It's going to be all sticking out. And then on top of that, I'm going to add some pickled jalapeno peppers. Once again, you do not have to add the spices to it. But like I said, we like spices. So that's going to work for us, okay? Another little sip. Mmm. So good. All right. Let me move this out the way. And bring over my English muffins. And I'm going to cut these in half. I'm gonna cut this one in half. So how's everybody doing? Um, I wanna thank you for tuning in to this show, In the Kitchen with Chef Renee Hewitt. This is uh, an honor to be able to have a show like this um, broadcasting through Verizon Spectrum and RCN. Uh, for those who don't know, it comes on Saturdays from 12.30 to 1.30, and then the show repeats itself every Wednesday evening from 5 to 6. There'll be more information. You'll see it pop up, uh, what's going on. If you know people who do not have Spectrum or RCN or Verizon, they will be able to go to my website and they'll be able to stream it from there, plus the other food videos that I created in the past year. Okay, so let's move on. So being that I have this, now this is a large piece of um, chicken. So actually I'm gonna have to cut it in half, but that's not a problem. Okay, we have this here. Let me, let me see. Let me use a fork, see how this is looking. Oh, look at that. This is cooking really well. Mm. And just to let you folks know, January the 18th, I will be cooking a soul food class at Hudson County Community College here in New Jersey. It will be four hours. I'll give you more information about the time and who you need to call to register. The class will be on a Saturday. I will be teaching how to make cornbread from scratch. That's the key, cornbread from scratch. Also, baked macaroni with four cheeses, not one, 
for Jesus. That's going to be sensational. Baked macaroni, could you taste it now? Oh, just, just so good, so good. Also, the veggie that I'm going to be cooking is going to be broccolini. I don't know if many of you taste broccolini, but broccolini is really, really good. It's a good vegetable. Very, very good. So on January the 18th, don't forget, check back, find the time, and then you'll be able to come and sit in on the class that I will be teaching. Cornbread from scratch baked macaroni and cheese. And here's the icing on the cake. Bar chicken with barbecue sauce, of course. And you'll learn how to make the barbecue sauce from scratch. That should be exciting. Then you don't have to go to the stores and buy up barbecues. Oh, I need some barbecue sauce, so let me go to the supermarket. You'll be able to make your own. Really easy, really easy. I had a problem in the beginning making it myself, but I mastered it. Okay, let's take a look at that chicken. Let's see. How's it doing? Oh, yeah, look at that. Turn it over. It is nice and brown. Oh, it's starting to, to bubble. Okay, while that's cooking, let me um, prepare another chicken for you, okay? Put this on the side. Get our breadcrumbs. Let me get some gloves. Here we are. Oh, that looks, that, that looks so good. I'm gonna throw down on that this afternoon. That's for sure. Really good. Let me get these gloves on. Okay, I'm ready. All right, so remember, the chicken was already seasoned, so we don't have to worry about that. We just need to take it and put it in the egg, and then take that, put it in the breadcrumbs, and I have a cooking sheet here that we're gonna rest them on until they're ready to be fried. Now, if you do not want to fry your chicken, you can have the same method. Take it and put it on the, on the cooking sheet, and then put it in the oven. It'll do the same thing. And remember now, the chicken, the slices are thin. If you get the chicken breast, you can make it as thin as you like. And it doesn't take long. Like if you make um, chicken parmesan, when you brown that chicken, it only takes a minute to put it in the oven. So you can do the same thing. All right. So we have this. Let me get a nice size. Take this. Put it in my egg, let the excess drip off. Then I'm gonna take this, put it in the egg, I mean, put it in the cornflakes. Get the cornflakes on there real good. And press down. Look at that. Oh my goodness. I am throwing down on this, trust me. And when you make it, you're gonna say, Renee, this is the best. Okay, I have some more chicken. Let's do another piece. Well seasoned, you can see it. Look at that, egg. Let that drip off into my cornflakes as such. Let's press it down. I enjoy doing this. I really do. This is so much fun. When you can cook for your significant other and they look and they say, what are you making? Oh, I have a new recipe that Renee taught me and I'm gonna see how it comes out. It's gonna come out good, trust me on that. Okay? Woo, look at that chicken. Take this. Put that on my sheet. Um, 
I can take these off because I'm finished. Good. Let's take a look at this chicken. Oh my goodness. To die for. So good. Let's get a plate. Oh, I have one here. That I can take. Wow. It smells good in here. Oops. Smells really good. Okay. I think what I'm going to do while I'm talking to you and I'm fixing some more, I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to add it to my oil. I bought this little one burner and let me tell you, it does wonders. We were trying it out earlier, running a test, and I think it got so hot it was smoking. I said, uh-oh, the smoke alarm is gonna go off. Okay, all right, so while that's doing that, let me move this. Bring our chicken that we just cooked. Get our... It's a mess in here, but that happens when you cook. And here we go. All right, so. I want to put some of this chipotle sauce on the bun, or rather, my uh, English muffin, oh my goodness. I'm gonna be screaming and hollering. <laughs> oh, this is so spicy. This is so spicy, but that's okay because I'm gonna eat it anyway. Spiciness is good for you. Put a little bit on here. Oh, yes. Yeah, there we go. Then, I'm going to rinse my knife. While that's cooking, I'm gonna cut. Being that this chicken is so, it's so um, large, I could stack it twice, okay? This is looking really good, and you can see it's thoroughly cooked. There's no pink on the inside. I'm gonna take that and put here. Let's move this out the way. I'm gonna take my second piece and put here as such. So I'm building. That's cooking. Hold on. I have my pickled jalapeno peppers. Okay, so next, I'm, as you can see, I'm building and I'm going to add some jalapeno peppers. And these peppers are not hot. They are pickled and have been removed. And they're, they're really good, they're tasty. When you have your sandwich, it'll give you a little crunch. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. And some on view. Mm. There we go. On the other side, just a pinch more of my sauce, my, oops, my spread.
Let's see. Yeah, there we go. This is going to go on top. And here. This is going to go here. And we turn her over. And we have our chicken sandwich. Uh, there are chicken burgers, but we like the chicken sandwich. And this is not very big. Some of them I made before and the chicken is like gigantic <laughs> when you bite into it. It's falling all over the place. But in this case, I made the chicken just a little bit smaller so it'll fit on the English muffin. And as you can see, look at this. Beautiful. Let's cut this in half. There we are. Look at that. This is so good. This is smelling up the kitchen. Mmm. 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 Sorry. Mmm. <laughs> the flavors are hitting me. You get the crunch from the cornflakes. You get the heat from the chipotle mixture with the mayonnaise. That's optional. You do not have to um, use that. I'm having a little sip of wine. Wow, that was good. Well, thank you for coming back to In The Kitchen with Chef Renee Hewitt. Remember, January the 18th, I'll be cooking a soul food class at Hudson Community College of their adult education, the extended education classes. It's not the college itself, it is the extended education um, department on the fifth floor. You'll be able to go online and register for it and I'll let you know how much it is. Okay, it's barbecue chicken. I'll teach you how to make barbecue sauce. It's cornbread made from scratch. It's baked macaroni and cheese with not two cheeses, four cheeses. And I'm sure you are going to enjoy this class. In addition, I also might be doing a vegan class, a veggie, veggie class, a vegan class. One of those classes that's coming up, I'll probably be doing that as well. Okay, this is doing good. I can smell it. I want to thank you again for coming back to In the Kitchen. And you have a beautiful day or evening. Until the next time, I'm Renee Hewitt. Bye.